This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. And by Eero, the wireless mesh network solution that you need. Visit Eero.com to get yours and use the code MACVOICES to receive free overnight shipping to the U.S. and Canada. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is the second of our holiday gift guide shows. These are always very popular shows. They're also a whole lot of fun for us to do because we get to try to share with you what we want or what we would give to those we care about. Um, and to be honest with you, there's sometimes a little bit of one-upsmanship that goes on. So uh, sometimes it's for the best. Sometimes it's for the strangest. Sometimes it's for the most expensive. You just never know where it's going to go, but it's going to be fun. Uh, so let's introduce the panel first, and then we'll get to it. And before we do that, though, I want to make sure you, you understand the rules the same way that everyone else does. Pretty much anything is up for grabs here. Um, it, we prefer tech-oriented, obviously. If it has a power button, it's in, no question. Um, the only rules really are that the this panel can't pick anything that previous panels have picked, and they've been given a list of those things. And you can also find that uh, list on the Mac Voices blog as well. Um, so with that, uh, let's find out who's here. Uh, and I'm going to take a top to bottom on my screen for no other good reason. Uh, first up, Mr. Bart Bouchot. Bart, welcome. It's good to see you. It is my absolute pleasure. It's it's become a, a tradition that every every November December I get an email from Chuck saying, "Please come and tell me about cool stuff." So here I am. Yeah, it's, and it's it's so much fun to see you because when we do your show, I just get to to hear you, but I get to see you hit this way, so this is good. Um, underneath him again on my screen is Mr. Brett Terpstra. Brett, it's good to see you. Always a pleasure, Chuck. I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say and show us. I hope it's. I hope it lives up to expectations. Uh, I, I, the one thing, though, I have to ask right off the bat, though, what does your shirt say? Oh, it says, sorry I'm late, I didn't want to come, which isn't actually <laughs> about this podcast. I had it on when I went to the psychiatrist today, and I had to rush back here for the show. That's your story? You're Don't take it personally. It, <laughs> it is Okay. It's absolutely true. All right. Interesting. You you wore that to the psychiatrist. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, she has a good sense of humor. Oh, good. It's cool. <laughs> Last but absolutely not least, uh, the man with the purple hair, Mr. Joe Kissel. Joe, it's great to see you. Hello. Always a pleasure to be here. And hey. thank you for inviting me once again. Hey, I, I I know it's super busy. This is this is an extra busy time of year for you, so I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. And um, as as we record this, I think you're getting ready to leave and uh, go and speak at MacTech. That is correct. So um, I will be leaving in a couple of hours, and uh, more than a couple. Dri driving up late tonight and uh, speaking tomorrow. So what, what's your topic, Joe? Ah, well, in fact, um, my, the title of my talk is. Uh, the iPad for the Mac curmudgeon. Um, so the, the the premise of this talk is sort of I'm I'm a Mac guy from way back. I'm one of those cranky Mac guys. Like I don't want to use anything else. And um, I I keep running into people who are as tech savvy as I am, if not more, who are switching to iPads as their main uh, computing device. And I'm kind of going, how is that even possible? So I, I was I, I'm pretending that I approach this with an open mind, pretending that would be something that I would actually do. For the sake <laughs> trying of to put myself into those to those people's <laughs> shoes and uh, and see what that would be like. So uh, a good time will be had by all. I don't doubt it. Sounds sounds interesting. We'll, we'll have to get you to report back on that later. All righty. I have a quick question. Yes. Is is Joe wearing a ballpoint pen as a accessory? To match his hair, um, this this is a a purple ballpoint pen, and uh, and this is actually something I recommended I think like a couple of years ago. It's uh, this is free. This is not part of our. So don't charge me for this, Chuck. This is no. I'd still get my picks. Okay. Uh, this is a um, 
a, a friction clicker and and it's erasable ink but it's not like the old-fashioned erasable ink um this isn't really an eraser this is just rubber and um and heat it builds up heat when you when you rub it on something that you've written and the heat is what erases it so if you write something with this pen you can even like stick it in a microwave oven to erase it um so uh it's it's erasable purple ink what could be better so did you do That's the awesome. hair to match the pen or vice versa um, usually <laughs> I, usually I pick out like a shirt color and then I dye my hair to match. Uh, today, like I didn't, I, I thought I like, it's subtle. It's subtle. subtle. I like uh, the coordination. Yeah. No, you know, I, uh, purple and I go way back. That's kind of another, you know, I don't want to get too far off the, the, the gift topic idea, but, uh, <laughs> Sorry, but let's Jeff. just say that purple and I go way back. Yeah, but, but you won't be charged for it, but you de definitely have to send me a link to that pen just because now we've right. talked about it. So we have to it tell comes people, in, you know, it, it comes in blue, it comes in pink, green, whatever you want. Uh, but, but obviously I have taste. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So, so here we go. Uh, this is going to be fun. So, um, again, I'm going to keep the same order just to keep it uh, simple. Um, so, Bart, that means you get the first pick for this gift guide. Okay, which means no one can steal it because I'm first. So, my I decided to pick as my first thing these piece of tech apart from the obvious, which is like my iPhone and stuff that is the most used every single day of my life, and it is these. It is a pair of Trex Titanium Bone Conduction headphones. So the joy of these is that they don't cover your ears. So if you go jogging, cycling, if you do any sort of activity where you want to listen to podcasts or whatever, but you would prefer not to get run over or killed, then you need bone conduction headphones because they don't block any of the outside noise and you perfectly hear what you're listening to. And and the technology for these guys has come a long way because the first set of bone conduction headphones I had had like a battery pack that went around the back of your neck and there were these giant big things. And these treks are, they're tiny. I mean, they're, all the brains are sitting in these tiny little lobes here. I mean, and they're, they're just not big. It has the batteries and everything in it. And they're just, they're perfect. And because they're around the neck design, they, they stay on when you're running or cycling or doing anything. Um... They say that you shouldn't go swimming with them, so they're not waterproof, but they are water resistant, and uh, they have stood up to a year and a half of the Irish weather, which involves quite a bit of getting rained on, I'll be honest, um, and they work. So basically, I, I, um, I go out on the bike two times a day for an hour each time. These are with me every single day of the year, and I have had them for a year and a half, and they are as good as the day I bought them, and I just absolutely adore them, love them to bits. So they're from... Um, Aftershocks is the name of the company, and they're the Trex Titanium from Aftershocks. When I bought them, they were about $150-ish, and um, they may have jiggled a bit in price. Very so, nice. And, and I assume that even though you can still hear the outside world, the music comes through, or, or podcasts or whatever you're listening to, comes through yeah, very clear. It, much clearer than the first generation of this kind of technology. So, like I say, I had the Damson Headbones before, which is sort of the, the they broke ground on this whole product category. And these are much better. The, the sound quality is amazingly good. Um, it's it's kind of black magic. I don't know how they do it, but it, it's very clear. And yeah, you could you could easily do music, even though I choose to use it for voice. Hmm. Oh, and they have a two year guarantee. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Very yeah. good. Thank you. Okay, great. Great. We're off to a, a good start. Mr. Terpstra, your pick for the first round. Okay, I'm going to make my first round the Anchor Sound Core. I did not bring enough props. I can't show you what this looks like. That's okay. Um, I'll, 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 I'll have a graphic up for it. Which I'm going to regret for the second one. I may run out while someone is talking because you're going to want to see this. But um, the Anchor Sound Core is Anchor's Bluetooth portable speaker. A little outdoor weather resistant, um, like one foot by three inches by two inches. I'm guessing that's a guess. Um, but it it's able to connect to all of my devices seamlessly. I never run into the issues I've had with other Bluetooth speakers that once they pair, they're impossible to switch devices on. The battery life on the thing is great. The sound is, we'll say, four an outdoor Bluetooth speaker that costs like $50, it is excellent. Um, it's not going to compare to, you know, a $400 Bose speaker, but 
if you're looking for a good outdoor speaker for, you know, if you'd like to do yoga to metal, um, it's perfect for taking out on the porch with your yoga mat. Um, if you like to play background music during dinner, just to see if anyone notices that you're playing like acoustic covers of very offensive rap songs. Um, it, it's, it's perfect. It'll go with you anywhere. You have a very interesting social life, don't you, Brad? It, it dwindles year after year. People get very bored with me. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Anchor makes some surprisingly great speakers. So I, Anchor makes a lot of great stuff. Yeah. I, I, first time I bought from Anchor years ago, um, I thought, oh, this is just some other off-brand Chinese. I didn't know the background of Anchor at all. And so I just assumed it was another one of those weirdly named where you get the same product from like 50 different vendors. And it, no, I was super impressed. First thing I bought actually is still right in front of me, a uh, seven port USB three hub. Yeah, no, I love Anchor. Yeah. Good pick. Good pick. Okay, Joe, the moment we've been waiting for is your first pick. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> You know, I have I have several objects in front of me, and I was trying to decide which one should I start with. But but since Brett mentioned, you know, random Chinese objects that are, you know, you can buy more or less the same thing with a lot of brand names on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about one of those. But first, I have to tell you why I own this, and and it's a sad story. Um, I I have a tripod that I use when I need to record events, you know, I will put my uh, iPad or my iPhone on on the tripod and 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 record stuff with it. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was uh, I, I had to go to a memorial service. Um, and someone had asked me to record this very important memorial service for posterity. So I said, Sure, I'll bring my iPad mini and a tripod and I'll set that up and I'll, I'll make a recording. Uh, so I took my tripod, my iPod mini, I went to set up and as I was uh, trying to attach the iPod to the tripod, uh, the, the, the mount I had, the thing that, that connects the two, broke. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the name, uh, but it was a, a, larger, a larger version of, of this thing here. And it's sort of spring-loaded, and it was large enough to accommodate my, uh, my iPad mini. But I don't know if you can see, but, but this bit here at, at the end where, where the tripod actually screws in, it's just plastic. And what had happened was, I guess I over tightened it, and the the whole bottom of it just shattered. So, um, so I had to just hold the thing for an hour to record this memorial service, which was suboptimal. And I decided, well, I guess I need a new a new tripod mount. So I'm looking at all these different tripod mounts, and my first uh, priority is something that has a a metal, you know screw receptacle. Um, but also I wanted something <clears throat> that could ideally hold either my iPhone or my iPad, preferably in either portrait or landscape mode. And, um, and so like I have an, I have 10.5 inch iPad pro. So that's kind of a, a pretty big range. So I, I found this, this is, um, this is one of those things that you can, I, I think that it comes under different brand names. Um, this one is spelled G I M A R S and, uh, darned if I know how you pronounce that Gimmers, Guy Mars, Jimmers. I don't know. We'll, we'll just, we'll say it's, it's Gimar. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, G I M A R S. So, uh, so this, this object is a tripod mount and, and it does have metal threads. So it's not going to self-destruct when you screw it onto your tripod and, and it's adjustable every which way. So you can um, you can adjust this this uh, part of it down so that it can hold even like a small iPhone in in landscape mode. Or you can you can pull this out and then you can pull this out too. So it can even hold a a tall uh, iPad in or in in portrait mode. And it's it's totally adjustable every which way. And not only do you have the the screw mount here, you have another one on the bottom here. So basically any angle you might want to put any type of mobile device at on a tripod, this thing will accommodate it. And it was 10 bucks. So 
Uh, this is not, I mean, it's plastic, okay? It's not the sturdiest item in the world, um, but it's perfect for my needs because it accommodates all sizes of devices that I have, all orientations. It's not going to self-destruct, and it was 10 bucks. So the uh, tripod mount is, is my first pick. And so if you can you buy like five and just pack backup. Sure sure Sorry? You can buy like five of them and just pack them that's as backup. Right. Absolutely. Basically disposable. I didn't have it for this round, but but actually Joe did have uh, tripod mounts for iPhones and iPads on, on my list. So you kind of stole those. So unless I can find a differentiating thing, uh, that, that one's <laughs> off the table. But on the other hand, sorry, I probably, not sorry, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I, on the other hand, I probably won't be able to find one that whose name I can't pronounce. So you may have the distinction That's, there. Yeah. Right. Well, my first one pick for this round, um, I'm going to continue a theme I did with the first gift guide. Um, it's been a little bit of a rough year for me. I've had a little bit of a run of bad luck. Um, one of the th bad things that happened to me this year was that I had a lightning strike very close to my house and lost quite a bit of equipment. Um, the, so th this has to be one of the unsexiest, most boring picks that you will ever see because it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. But it was one of the reasons that we're still talking here with this because it saved my bacon with a lot of my computer equipment. And that is a surge protector. Now, there are a lot of them out there, but the one that I've, I was using, and so therefore I'm going to advocate it, is the Triplite 12 Outlet Surge Protector Power Strip for telephone, modem, coax. Um, it's got a right angle plug. It's about 35 bucks on Amazon. Um, I, I don't know a lot about surge protectors other than to know you want to buy one that is powerful enough. Um, I love this one because with 12 outlets, I can plug a lot of things directly into it. I don't have to do that daisy chain thing. And that becomes very important when you start talking about the insurance that is associated with these. So what can I tell you? It's, it's 30 bucks uh, or so. It's not going to be something that you're going to, you're going to enjoy getting or, or receiving necessarily unless you have that <laughs> lightning strike. But if that happens, man, it is, it is worth its weight in gold. And I, How are the receptacles? How, how are they spaced? Um, they're spaced pr pretty well, Brett. I, you know, I've, Let's see. I'm trying to think of a good adapter. Like you could put uh, like multiple uh, MacBook adapter uh, power adapters on it and not have any trouble. Um, if you have but big blocks, it might be a little problematic. Okay, so they're all evenly spaced. It doesn't have like the four ones for like the wall wart style. No, no. That's that's the biggest thing for me when I'm buying them is the, if, when they when they stack the receptacles right next to each other and you have one that plugs in sideways and yeah. takes up two slots then and that drives me nuts but, okay okay so I'll, I'll add a little bit of a bonus pick and i've got to go find the link for it but um you can also buy these packs of very short extension cords and when i say short i mean like like three inch ones yeah, yeah. This, this long and that solves your whole problem because now you plugged in or just now you that. have two problems What's your second problem? Yeah. <laughs> now you have a bunch of extension cords coming. Yeah. No, that, that yeah. would solve it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, just, you know, if you have computer, expensive computer equipment, get it plugged in, you know, please. Because um, it, you know, I, I keep saying I'm now protected by the law of averages because lightning never strikes twice in the same place, right? <laughs> I'm buying the surge protectors anyway. So, Chuck, my experience, we... Where I grew up, the, there was a, a certain orchard where our power lines ran through that just kept attracting storms. It just, every time there was a storm, we would lose, it was our phone line, and we had like sparks flying out of the phone, and it just oh. happened over and over and over again. So it absolutely can happen again. So definitely buy your surge protectors. All right, so now I'll buy multiple. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cost me a little money. Mac Voices is supported by Eero, the wireless mesh networking system you really need. No, I mean it. You really need Eero right now. If you have spotty Wi-Fi, you need Eero right now. If you have trouble setting up your home wireless network, you need Eero right now. If your router hasn't been updated since the last congressional election, you need Eero right now. Eero's wireless mesh network system is physically small, but huge in size and features. Just plug power and an internet connection to your Eero, Use your iPhone to go through the setup process, and you're good to go. 
with powerful, fast wireless access. But that's just where it starts. Add Eero beacons throughout your home or office to expand the coverage so that you have full speed, full power access everywhere. Adding the beacons is as simple as finding an open power outlet and connecting them to the Vane Eero via the Eero app. Boom! Your network is now extended. The new second generation Eero has added a 5 GHz radio, making it tri-band. That's tech talk that means your Eero is now even better and faster than previous models. Twice as fast, in fact. And a new thread radio means that you can easily connect your smart doorbell, smart lock, smart light bulbs, and any other smart devices. Concerned about stories you see in the news about needing to keep your router updated? Eero handles all that for you, pushing their updates to your device automatically so that you don't have to bother. When I first got my Eero, I set aside about an hour, thinking it would take me that long to get it up and running. In fact, I was back online in about 15 minutes, and that included the time it took to go to two different corners of my house and plug in the Eero beacons. In fact, the biggest hassle of the whole process was finding an open outlet to plug them into. But that was my problem, not Eero's. If you want all those features and more out of your wireless network, then you have to get Eero. Visit Eero.com right now and use the code MACVOICES to get free overnight shipping to the U.S. and Canada. That means that by this time tomorrow, your network can be better, faster, and more secure. Again, Eero.com and the code MACVOICES for free overnight shipping to the U.S. and Canada to get you the best wireless experience you've ever had. Thanks to Eero for their support of Mac Voices. Okay, so that's round one, and that's just about as diverse a round as I think we've ever had on the Mac Jury. <laughs> right, let's see if we can't diversify it on round two. I think that's that good. That sounds like a so, challenge. Yeah, so so you get the, the first diversification, Bart. Okay, well, I I figure we've talked – my first pick was hardware, so I'm going to pick software. And this is the kind of software that you, you can give to people. That they're not – dirt cheap apps and there's a certain social aspect so basically i've been on a bit of a health buzz and that's been a twofold thing it's been exercise and it's been diet and so the exercise is really well taken care of with the my first pick the headphones and in terms of diet i've been experimenting with cooking because if you cook it yourself you know what goes into it so you need an app for managing your recipes and you need an app that you you and your friends all use so you can share recipes with each other and Alison Sheridan put me on to a great app called Paprika, like the spice. And there are versions of it for, let me make sure I get all this, iOS, Android, Kindle, Mac, and Windows. Uh, and it synchronizes itself with the cloud. It's kind of magical. So if you're, you know, let's say I usually cook with the iPad in front of me. In fact, the iPad Pro, so I really can't miss. And as you're cooking, you can tap on each ingredient and it will strike through it. And you tap on the current instruction and it will highlight it. And so you basically work your way through. It automatically detects times. So if you tap on one of those, a timer starts. It automatically detects quantity. So you can say, scale this whole recipe up by two or by one and a half or by whatever. And it detects units. So if you put something in with some weirdo recipe from you Americans where it's in like degrees Kelvin or something. No, not Kelvin. The other one, Fahrenheit. Uh, <laughs> you can just turn it to Celsius and, weird. you know, sanity returns. And all of your weirdo metrics like cups and ounces and pounds and whatnot. You know, we'll have it in grams, please. Um, it just it does all of that, and so you have one. You have that same recipe on your iPad, and then I like to take a picture so I can easily recognize my recipes. But I take a picture with my iPhone, uh, where I also have the app, and I just edit the same recipe in the iPhone, take the picture, and you can see it in within like five seconds. It shows up on your iPad. It is amazing how good the sync is, and also then I will often I'll often Google for recipes, so I'll have it on my Mac. I'll find a good recipe. I'll pop it in. I'll head down to the kitchen. I'll throw it up on the iPad. It really works well. You can export really easily. Um, so you can just send that paprika file to your friends who also have paprika. But if you have normal, you know, if you have family members who don't have paprika, just export to email. And they get a really nicely formatted email with the picture and everything. Push. Off it goes. Just take seconds. Um, so whenever you have someone over there and go, oh, that's delicious. Okay. Have the recipe. Push. So I, I live in that app in the kitchen. It is absolutely fantastic. And so... The only quibble I would have is that they make you buy it for the Mac, then they make you buy it again for the iPad, and then they make you buy it again for the iPhone. And but I guess it's again, worth it. I, I yeah, it is worth it, right? I, I did it, right? I own it on every platform, every device I have has paprika on it. So that and you know, I bought it for my mom. That is exactly my thinking this Christmas. Yeah, so I hope <laughs> mom isn't listening. 
<laughs> because no, it's it's fantastic. Like, um, and it won't be the first time I bought software from my mom. I bought her a family tree app once because she was big into genealogy. So I think this is, you know, it's a nice app to give to people who you who you talk to about cooking, and they then they can have all the joy you have at Paprika. So that, that's my pick, paprikaapp.com. I did not know about the email capabilities. I'm familiar with Paprika, but I did not know about the email capabilities. That's a really nice feature. Yeah, so you just click the, the standard square box with the arrow, that export thing, and one of your options is email. Hmm. Very nice. I, I have to add, you can also, once you've captured a recipe from the web or entered it yourself like a, a Luddite, um, you can then uh, just tap the grocery cart button on it, and it will create, it'll add everything you need to make this recipe to your shopping list, which you can share between, you know, multiple paprika users. And then as you, when you go to the grocery store, it's already split it up by like what aisle it's in, produce, dairy, et cetera. And you just check it off as you go. And that shopping list is constantly synced. You can have two people shopping at the same time off the list. And it's, um, you can also export those to reminders, which is nice, but I, I like to stay in the paprika ecosystem. Good pick. Yeah. Actually, there's one more thing. You can also pin, you can also pin recipes. So if you're cooking, say, five different dishes to make a meal, you just pin those five, and then you can tap between <laughs> them really quickly, which is important. And you can have multiple timers too. Yes, thank. I mean, if only iOS could master that. You know, timers <laughs> more than one. What were you thinking, Apple? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Brett and Bart will be exchanging recipes after the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brett, unless you're going to give us a recipe, give us a pick. All right, I have to do the Black & Decker gyro screwdriver, which is actually spelled like hero, like the sandwich, but you'll get it. Um, so it's this, okay? Okay. And you grip it, and when you squeeze the back, a little flashlight comes on. And then whichever direction you turn your wrist in, it'll start. And the further you turn, the faster it goes, which oh, means so like clever. from any angle, you can just like stick it up over your head, like to a screw in the ceiling and just start turning your hand the direction you want it to go and you're done. It is, and it's so compact and it's four volt. Uh, I don't even know what the torque on it is. But there's been I have used this to drill into a cement wall. I put a cement bit on it, like a masonry bit, and then just gone straight into a, a cement wall to hang a shelf. It's awesome. Wow. And right now they're like, I just checked Amazon. They're like thirty five bucks. I paid fifty for this. So I don't know if that's because of some recall I don't know about, but they're they're cheap right now. So for some yeah. reason, Joe seemed to be really enjoying. It your had pick. a power button. Okay. Yeah. Have yeah power I, think, back. I think that there may be uh, the the shape of it. Is that what you're? I, oh, we'll get to that. I'll, I'll let you you finish with yours, and then I'll get on to. Them. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Okay. We're good. Okay. I can't. All right. I, I, this is a heck of a segue, Joe. I can't wait to see no, what but, you're going to do. You know, and I'm, I'm, this is just delightful because for the second time now, uh, Brett's choice has influenced my next choice. So Brett held up this sort of orangish, vaguely pistol-shaped object, and uh, and I'm going to hold up an orangish, <laughs> vaguely pistol-shaped yeah. object. I, I, my my excuse was going to be I wanted something that matched your shirt, Chuck. Um, but this is <laughs> so into this is a uh, this is a a, uh, a laser infrared thermometer made by uh, Newbie, not like. That kind of newbie, but the other kind of newbie. So if you really need to know, like, the temperature of your uh, tripod mount, you just, you know, shoot the laser out and it says, well, it's 83.3 degrees. Um, now, I have actually wanted one of these for, like, 10 years. Ever since I saw, it must have been, like, you know, watching an episode of Good Eats because, yes, I cook, too. Um, and, you know, Alton Brown saying, no, your skillet should be between this. You know, and, and, of course, he he has, you know, a very expensive version of this. And he flashes at the skillet and says, see, this is, you know, you want this. Um, but back then, these things were kind of expensive. And it wasn't that important that I know exactly how hot my skillet is. Um, but now, but so, like, a few weeks ago, 
Uh, somebody tweeted that these things were available for a special low price on Amazon as an add-on item for like $6.65. So I'm like, well, of course, for $6.65, I'm going to buy one of these. Now, since then, um, the price has gone up to like $23 or something. Um, but but it, it happened. It 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 um, appears from time to time as a really cheap add-on item. So if you wait, you might get lucky. But even twenty-three dollars is not bad for this. Um, and I don't remember uh, the temperature range. It can measure is uh, okay between um, minus fifty degrees Celsius and five hundred degrees Celsius, which. Ought to wow. be like enough for most for most purposes. You're not. It's not going to be accurate enough for like you know body temperature. But what it is accurate enough for in this family is telling you the temperature of bath water before you put your young kids in it. Um, because my my wife and I have different uh, tolerances when it comes to the temperature of bath water, and our kids are less tolerant than either of us. Um, so one thing we don't want to do is like dip our finger and say, oh, that's fine. And then the kids go in and Mah! So, uh, so this can tell us in, in half a second, is it, is it a safe yet not frigid temperature? Um, and, and it's also useful for, you know, cooking and checking, you know, malfunctioning appliances and, and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, laser infrared thermometer, somewhere between six and twenty four dollars uh and in a fashionable uh fluorescent orange uh, made by newbie so there you go wow that's six bucks joe i mean that's a that's yeah. a i mean it's, it's a deal with 20 something but for six i know right yeah i wish i'd have seen that i'd have, i'm like you ought to jumped on that right away right and i don't and even this is kids. way better a way better solution than using the uh sternly admonishing no, it's not too hot. Stop <laughs> crying. That method. This is, right. I'm, and technology improves everything. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, I had no idea we were going to have a childcare device in this pick. In this. Uh, <laughs> well, so. you know, I don't. I don't normally advocate lasers as a way of you know, as a childcare device. <laughs> That's for kids. But you know, yeah. there are certain <laughs> situations. So, <laughs> just just Chuck, next... you did dare us to be weird, right? You did oh. say you wanted us out of yeah. So yeah. look, yeah, uh, yeah. Joe's next pick will probably have something to do with discipline and lasers, but we will see. <laughs> mm, okay, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Chuck wouldn't put it past him. He furiously starts googling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have a lot of objects in front of me. <laughs> oh. Well, my pick for this round, um, happily, this is one that did not occur to me this year, so at least not in this way. Um, but it's it's this little beauty, um, if you can see that. This is a webcam cover. Um, you can get uh -huh. 10 of these on Amazon. Um, they come in black, they come in silver, and they also come with a little lock, and this doesn't have it, but a little lock printed on there so that you can see it. Because honestly, if I take this and put it on the uh, on my iMac, um, it disappears, so you don't realize it. Same thing on my MacBook, you know, with with the with the uh, black bezel. So you're almost. In fact, there have been a number of times that I've been trying to troubleshoot my webcam because it wasn't working. And why isn't it working? It's because it was covered up. Um, but but they they co go on and off very easily. They're they've got that kind of adhesive. It doesn't leave any residue, but it definitely sticks. It's not like it's something that's going to come off and get down in your keyboard or whatever. Um, um, you know, there's just there's been enough talk about security, enough talk about webcam hacking, that I thought you know for ten bucks and and ten devices, it seemed like a no brainer to just go ahead and get it, put it on, and that way I don't have to worry about it. And as long as I remember to take it off when I want to use the webcam, it, it's not a problem. Um, so for ten bucks, I would tell you, you know, if you have kids or if you have computers that are anywhere that, that you feel like if somebody did look in. And you wouldn't be comfortable with that, you know. Get this. That should be anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. I, you just, I've just had a very uncomfortable feeling. So I'm sitting here in the room where I happen to record podcasts, which is also my bedroom, and my bed is over there, about a foot away, and my iMac is over there, about a foot away. It's like, hang on a second. <laughs> I probably should stick something on that webcam. You've you've been a star all this time, Barton. You didn't know. It. I hope not. <laughs> That's where I've seen you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh huh. So anyway, you know, for ten bucks, uh, it, it's it's in that stocking stuffer mode, and you know, no, I'm not completely paranoid. I'm just a little paranoid, but you just you see enough of this stuff that for ten bucks, fix it, and then you don't have to worry about it at all. Yeah. So. And can you reuse the same one choke? Like you're saying, the adhesive comes off pretty easily. Could you? Use the same one a few times? Or? Oh, oh, yeah. In fact, I just as, right before I showed this to you, I reached up to the iMac and, and peeled it off because oh, I'm using a separate camera. So now I've put it back on and, you know, there it is. It's, it's done. Can you demonstrate how it works on uh, on your current camera? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um. yeah, sure, Joe. It, it, it looks a lot <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, so, yeah. But and yeah, thanks, Bart, because you're right. I should make that point that it is reusable. So you can peel it right off and put it right back when you're finished. No problem. Excellent. So, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, definitely a stocking stuffer. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So that puts us uh, two rounds down. Um, and that means we're halfway through. So if you are having trouble deciding what to pick next, pick carefully because you've only got two, two left. Bart, you're up. I have four left on my short list. I've been agonizing with myself, but. Since I do a Mac podcast and a photography podcast, I should pick something photography related for round three. I think uh, this is it's 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 probably close to a stocking stuffer. It's uh, one of these. Looks quite small and innocent. It's called a Ybal card, size of a credit card. Um, it is certified neutral grey, with a black point and a white point. A yoki for checking your focus and. Um, Measurements so that if you want to see what size your photograph is in the real world, it has a little scale at the bottom there in inches and centimeters. Um, you can stick them in your wallet. You can stick them. I, I keep them in my camera bag. You, you just, they're just easy to have around. And so the idea is it means you don't have to fight with white balance when you get home. So you're out, you're somewhere. You just put this anywhere in shot. I usually have a little silly selfie of me. Yeah, click. As long as it's in the shot, you put the white balance dropper on the neutral bit of the card. And then you just copy and paste that adjustment on every single photo you've taken. And hey, presto, your white balance is perfect. And then if you want artistically to make it feel warmer, well, then just nudge it. But you're nudging it off a scientifically correct setting. So when you're warming it, it'll warm in a nice, natural way. So you're not giving up artistic control, but you're just saving yourself an awful, awful lot of faffing around particularly indoors, Christmas time, people have all sorts of funny lighting, mixed lighting. It can be really hard to get the correct white balance of a family room. Just take one picture, you know, get someone to hold up the card, put it next to the face, whatever, take one picture, keep it aside. And then when you're going to edit your photos in Lightroom or whatever, just lift your adjustment off that and away you go. So they're, they come in all shapes and sizes. So I like the credit card size one be, be, well, because it's so small and handy. But they come up to like A4 sized. Um, they're, they're like a credit card. They're nice, sturdy, robust. I've had this one for about three years now and it's still in perfect condition. Um, so I will give Chuck the link. It's Y-B-A-L, W-H-I-B-A-L. And I think every, every photographer should have a Y-B-A-L card somewhere in their camera bag or, t you know, five or six of them. They're, they're great yokes to have around. Art, is it um, is it laminated or finished in such a way that if you're tossing it uh, into your camera bag or keeping it in your wallet that it doesn't get dirty or can be cleaned up? It's solid plastic, like a credit card. Okay. Okay. So, so now it does also come with a fancy pants little, little thingy to stick it into. So I usually keep mine in its little sort of paper cover. So that's actually what's in my camera bag. And then I just whip it out when I need it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've had this one for quite a few years now, and it's yeah, it, it's it's lasting. So it's yball dot com. Um, it's from Michael Tapes Design. Um, great little yoke, and again, not horrifically expensive. I think about eighteen dollars or something like that. So, you know, again, stuffing stuffer. I think. Yeah, and and a simple way to start to try to improve your photography. Yeah, good pick. I like it. Even I can do that. <laughs> Brett, you're up. What do you think? Okay, so musicians, uh, serious musicians will not need this pick. But if you have young family members, relatives who want to get into music, the iRig series of uh, iOS and Mac adapters and keyboards are awesome. And they have a combo pack that is the iRig keys and iRig pads controllers for like $150 right now. And that, so pads, 
or your basic drum pads and it has um basic controls that you can map to a couple of uh, pots and a slider and then keys is just a 37 key MIDI controller. There are no sounds in this. It has connections for I iPhones with lightning cable um, and USB. And then you can just hook it into whatever DAW you want to use. It works with GarageBand on the iPhone, works with Sample Tank and uh, Groove Maker, Fruity Loops, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can just plug these in and start creating music with an actual keyboard instead of trying to play on your iPad or, you know. So if you already own a great MIDI controller for your computer, that's one thing. But I do, and I also love having these as secondary controllers and being able to just pack them and go with my iPad. Brett, I want to make sure I get it right. So so the, the hardware you just showed, that all comes with it? Yeah, well, yeah, it's those though that, it's so it's the keys and pads set. Right, for 150 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, normally this alone is 150. So if you buy the set on Amazon, um you're basically you're saving 100 bucks off buying the pads separately. Yeah, that's 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 funny if you just want to mess around with it. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Very good, yeah. And iRig does make great stuff across the board. So if if, there, if the if it, uh, the secondary pick for that would be their the multimedia I/O compact instrument microphone, their their I/O interface with MIDI that works with like all iOS and Mac stuff. Like you can plug a guitar in, plug a mic in, plug in a MIDI keyboard. That interface is awesome, but these don't need that. Good pick. Good pick. Wow. You're welcome. I could. <laughs> we said this before. We say it every show. You know, this is the trouble with these shows because they end up costing all the viewers and listeners money, but they cost us money too. You know, because we all look. I'm doing all right. I, I, all I'm buying so far is, is ten dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I already ordered a Y-Bal car while you guys were talking. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, now, now we have a new contest. Who can cause one of the other panels to? order things the fastest spend the most yeah spend the most <laughs> too. whoever, whoever ends the show with money in their pocket wins yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a game that's right yeah joe <laughs> round three all right this time uh my pick has nothing to do with what uh, brett just mentioned sorry uh, i guess i guess our streak i'm had sorry i feel like i failed you yeah, well, well, you really did, and um, you could you could make it up to me by uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put this iRig combo on my Amazon wish list, and so you know, but um, but but meanwhile, um, Chuck, you may remember from from previous years, I, I have mentioned a couple of times that I have an abiding fondness for adhesives. Um, I just like, you know, if I go into the, you know, Home Depot or whatever local hardware store, um, yes, I love looking at the tools and I love looking at the fasteners and I love looking at the gardening supplies. But, but when I get into the adhesives aisle, that is where I just like, oh, oh, with this, you can, you can glue this to that but with this you can glue this to that and i just i i, I get i geek out over like tape and and caulking and like all kinds of adhesive just i don't know i i just always had this this in incredible fondness for adhesives so uh so this past summer i was at the county fair and of course they have this, these these huge pavilions with all these all these vendors and it's like walking through a giant infomercial and they got all the kitchen things that slice and dice and all the all the little you know as seen on TV kinds of things and i just kind of go yeah whatever another knife another you know pillow whatever but then i walk by this booth that has glue and and i and i start looking and the guy sees me looking and he's like you know, I can tell you're a man who likes to stick things to other things. I'm like, <laughs> I really am. Like, cause, you know, because I got I got kids, right? And they the kids have toys, and the toys are always breaking. 
And so I'm, I'm the guy that has to fix all the broken toys. So of course, you know, I have lots of glues here and I've got super glue, which is great for a lot of things. But one thing super glue is not good for is most kinds of plastic. Um, I, I've, I've had very poor luck using super glue to repair plastic and I've tried other things, but, uh, I always, I always have this problem of, you know, what, whatever the thing is I need to fix, it happens to be inconveniently, you know, one of the two sides of it has, happens to be made of some material that doesn't work with whatever glue I have available, or it's, you know, or the glue I have is too brittle and it needs to be flexible or it's too flexible and it needs to be hard or whatever. So there's this booth, okay, at the county fair and their, their banner says the last glue. That's the name, the brand name, the last glue. Here it is. And, and they claim this is the last glue you'll ever need. You will never need to buy super glue again. You'll never need to buy any kind, you know, rubber cement. You'll never need to buy, you know, model glue. You'll need, never need to buy s s any other kind of glue to fix any other, any, any kind of material. So I'm like, all right. So, so, so the guy gives me this demo and he starts has all these different objects that he's gluing together, and it's very, very impressive. It's it's kind of like super glue, but um, it's flexible, and uh, so so like you can glue rubber to rubber, and it will still flex; it won't like crack. Um, and the glue remains liquid until you until you attach something so that it's deprived of oxygen and as soon as it's deprived of oxygen it instantly bonds it's not like you hold it for 30 seconds no no, no. it's it's liquid it's liquid it's liquid you stick it it's done and um and he's like now let me show you how this works on fingers and i'm like i was just gonna ask that <laughs> oh, man. seriously and i'm and he's like just give me your finger and he's, he like takes my finger and he puts some glue on it and he sticks my finger to i don't remember what it was and and he's like, okay, well, so lift this thing with your finger. I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, so far, yeah, this is nothing new to me. <laughs> now what's going to happen? <laughs> he's like, all right, now, now you just, so so now you just roll your finger off. And I rolled my finger off, and and it separated just like that, and there was no residue. And he's like, this is, this is our magic. We have this stuff that will stick to almost anything except for except for skin if it, if it's if it accidentally sticks to your skin you roll it off and it's fine and then he's like but i can see you're still a little skeptical what what about cuz you know it has to, it has to be deprived of air so what if you're trying to to fix something where you, you can't give it that anaerobic environment what if it's it's porous or you know you've got gaps to fill in well they have a solution to that too and that's this this powder called last fill and basically uh, you you sprinkle this powder over the irregular surface, and you you drip some of the glue on, and then you stick it together, and this fills all the gaps, um, and it works. You, you can use this for like he had an example of like a mug with a hole drilled in it, and he he demonstrated exactly how you like build this up, and you pour some of the the powder on, you put glue, powder glue, because it dries super super fast, and then you can actually fill a hole in a ceramic mug, and. And if you do happen to glue something that um, that you didn't want to glue, they also have a remover. And so you can buy a kit with all three of these substances in it. Um, and the, I forget, it was like $60 or something. And, uh, and, and I'm like, that's a lot of money for glue. But the guy was like, is it a lot of money for all the glue you will ever need to fix anything. I'm like, well, no. So I paid my 60 bucks and I got the glue. And and it's supposed to last, like you, ha you have to keep the refrigerator. That's the only thing you have to, it's, it's sealed, but you also have to keep it in the refrigerator. But other than that, um, it like lasts, it doesn't dry out like super glue, it lasts super long. Um, and I have fixed so many toys with this. A little bit goes a really long way. I am, I am, I'm crazy happy with the last glue. Now, it is true that since I bought this, I have not brought, I have not bought any other adhesive. Um, time will tell if I ever get into a situation that tempts me to buy an after the last glue. But, uh, but you know, so far so good. There you go. What what's in it? <laughs> uh, well, it says uh, sugar and spice. And everything. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> hydrogenated. I, I, I don't um, it it appears to be sort of a relative of super glue um but uh, it's but it's different. So What state do you live in? 
I live in California. Okay. I'm just wondering what your county fairs are like. That's all. Um, you want to well, know what's really <laughs> tell you about what's those. really weird here is that one of my backup picks, if someone stole one of mine, was going to be Gaffer's Tape, which would have been the perfect lead-in for you. I am sorry. Uh, I did fail. I will now put Gaffer's Tape on my wish list as well. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, I agree. Gaffer's tape is, is, is pretty <laughs> awesome. Joe, you should have told him to throw in a T-shirt, and you'd you'd take it, no question. You know that because because then you could have worn the the shirt, and none of That's us would right. have had any idea what this this pick was all about until you explained it. So I, I do have a whole Teespring shop. I can send you something. Okay. All right. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my pick um, is this. This is a Turbot, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Turbot Wireless Qi Charger for your iPhone 8 or iPhone 10. Um, I, I know that there are a lot of people out there trying to figure out what the best chargers are right now. Um, and I'm sure that there are some that are a little bit faster and you know a little bit maybe prettier. But the thing that drives me crazy about all these Qi chargers is that they all want you to lay your phone flat on the charger. And I never use my phone flat for much of anything. And especially with Face ID, that means I either have to pick it up and aim it at my face or I have to stand up and lean over so the thing recognizes me. Um, that's why I, I love the, the fact that this is a, at a, a, a very nice angle. I guess it's about 45 degrees. Um, this has three coils in it, so you can place your phone landscape or portrait and it will still charge. Um, I have used this with a case on my phone and a case off my phone, and it charges just fine. It, it acts just like it's plugged in. And that you, by the way, there is a two two coil model. Um, I'm not going to tell you that three coils is absolutely that much better because I haven't tested the two coil model. But I do know that you know, in the grand scheme of things, three seems to be better than two. So, and it's only like a, a, a two bucks more. So why wouldn't you get the third coil? Um, and it's just it's just great. I mean, again, it's not the sexiest pick in the world, but it, it's very practical. And so I ended up with one for home, and I also ended up with one for the office. So that my phone is never not charged. I never have to worry about the battery life issue because any time that I'm at the office, it goes in. This goes in the charger, or this goes the phone goes in this. And at night, it goes in the one by my bed, and and it just works. Um, so it is from Turbot, and again, this is one of those. I, I, I have hope pronounced it right. Um, it's it's you can yeah you can buy Samsung and pay a, a name premium, um, but yeah I I love it and I can't honestly see any difference um, with any of the expensive ones. So you know go get it if you have an iPhone eight or iPhone ten. I have questions. Yes. Did you, did you say you use this at your desk? Yes. Okay. I've never the, my biggest problem with all iPhone stands at my desk is that they don't lay flat. Um, so like if I, if it's at my desk, I want it next to my keyboard where I can actually interact with it. If a notification notification comes up that I want to do something about and interacting with something up at a 45 degree angle has always been hard for me. I ended up building, um, my own little, and it's got a nano suction bottom with a channel for a lightning cable. There is no chi in this. But I honestly, I think that would be the best thing for me about getting an eight or a ten. Would all the all the stands would be flat? I appreciate your pick. Don't get me wrong; it looks brilliant, and I would love it by my bed. Mm -hmm. But at my desk, I want a flatter one, a yeah. fifteen degree one. Okay, I I, I can see that. So, I mean, well, I, can I see should that. say I always also use a keyboard tray so that for ergonomics. So my oh. keyboard's always down lower, so it just makes more sense for me to have it mostly flat next to my keyboard. I don't know. I guess I'm weird because I had to build this because there weren't any other options. No, oh, well. I, now that you've explained, but if I mean, anyone's interested, uh, maybe 150 bucks, I can, I, I'll whip one of these out for you. And or you Christmas can buy gifts for, for all you guys bucks. that clearly um, don't want this, so. Never yeah. mind. No, it's that's it's that's interesting, Brett, because I can I can sort of see your point. I guess 
I just, especially with the face ID, you know, that, that has sort of been the deal breaker for me because up to this wow. point, I, yeah, I've, I've, I had a charging cable there and I'd plug my phone in, but this is so much e easier, more convenient. And I'm able to look at it and see what's going on. That makes sense. So it yeah, just, see, things are changing. I'm just, I'm not up to date. She and face ID are going to have, I'm going to have to change my very ingrained habits. I'm, I'm a curmudgeon. <laughs> I'm a I'm a curmudgeon building iPhone accessories out of wood. Yeah, yeah, really wood. Who uses wood? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know, Chuck, I I'm I'm with you on the Face ID thing because I decided to get the uh, Mophie uh, Qi charger for my iPhone 10, and I had always been one of those people who needed like I have I have the old you know the old the old style um, iPhone dock you know one of these guys because I mm -hmm. I always like having less of my desk space taken up and I, I prefer the vertical orientation. Um, but I figured, well, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it'll, it'll be fine. And, um, it was, it was the face ID that tripped me up. Cause I looked at, I looked at that very model that you have. I thought about it and I thought, man, you know, let's, let's, let's get one of these ones that Apple recommends. And, and I don't, I don't think it's really going to matter that much to me that it's not vertical. And then I, I kept running into situations where I, I needed to, to turn it on and use it without picking it up. And I'm like, ah, I can't really just, uh, you know, it's really awkward. So, uh, I, I, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. Well, for 20 bucks, you can solve the problem, Joe. All right then. So there, there you go. There you go. Yeah. The, and face ID works just amazingly well. And I, and it's not like I, I have to get up close to it. I mean, as long as I'm within a reasonable range of vision or field of vision of the phone, it just snaps open and I'm ready to go. So, yeah, good. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile. Smile has upgraded PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad to version 3. And that's exciting news if you use your iPhone or iPad as a productivity device. With the new PDF Pen 3, you can manage your documents just like in the new Files app. Drag and drop documents into place, create new folders, and share multiple documents at once using the select command. Use files to import, export, and organize your PDFs. And no matter where you like to store your files, Smile and PDF Pen 3 have you covered, with support for iCloud Drive, Google Drive, Microsoft OneNote, and many other files-compatible apps. And you might think it's a small thing, but it isn't. PDF Pen 3 has updated highlight colors to help you make the notations you want to make the way you want to make them. Don't forget that PDF Pen 3 on iPhone and iPad goes hand in hand with PDF Pen 9 on the Mac, so that you can access, edit, and share your PDFs no matter where you are, no matter where they are, and no matter what device you have in hand at the moment. If you're running iOS 11, and who isn't, then you need to see what the wizards at Smile have cooked up for you in PDF Pen 3. It has and deserves a place on my home screen because of its power, flexibility, and usefulness. And it should be on your home screen too, on both your iPhone and your iPad. PDF Pen 3 for iPhone and iPad is available in the App Store for $19.99. Get it now and take control of all those PDF documents you have floating around and do more with them. That's PDF Pen 3 for iPhone and iPad from Smile, the makers of world-class software. Check out all their great productivity apps, including Text Expander for Mac, iPhone, and iPad, and PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad at smilesoftware.com. Thanks to Smile for being the longest running sponsor of Mac Voices. Okay, guys, this is the last round. So, this is, I don't know if you've saved your best for last or whether you're getting desperate or, or what. So, be as outrageous as you can. Art. What do you think? It's actually really hard to, to narrow it down because there's there's five things left on my list of things I could pick. <laughs> I had a few spares. No, I actually briefly toyed for a moment. You said most expensive, so I briefly toyed for a moment with recommending the mountain bike I, I cycle on every day, but that it, that would be €1,200. That's probably a little outside people's price range. So uh, I thought I'd go with another app. And this is this is a gift for the nerd in your life. This is not a recipe app for your mum. Unless your mum is as nerdy as Alison Sheridan, this, 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 is not, this is not an app for your mum. It's called Yoink, and it's now available on iOS and the Mac. And basically, it is a shelf for drag and drop. 
And this app sits there completely out of your way until you drag something. And then all of a sudden, a little shelf appears, whatever side of the screen you've configured it to come up on. I have mine on the right. And you drop it in there, and it just stays in there. And then you can change spaces, you can change apps, you can do anything you like, and it's just left sitting there for you. And then you can drag and drop it into your email or into your other finder window or into anywhere you like. And hey, presto. So it's basically a way to pause, drag and drop, which is extra useful if you're a heavy spaces user. So basically, the more of a power user you are, the more useful Yoink is. And it doesn't have to be files. You can select some text and just throw that into the Yoink toolbar and then drag and drop that text in. Uh, by default, when you drag something out, it leaves the shelf. But there's an option in the preferences to have it stay. And so if you're redoing the same piece of text 20, 30 times for some reason, you can actually just have it sitting there in your Yoink bar and just drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop and have it not delete itself until you clean up after yourself. So I usually have my shelf set not to automatically empty. Um, so if I'm editing a podcast, I'll have the folder where all the stuff is just in my Yoink bar the entire time. And every time you go file, save, and any app, you just drop that folder onto the open dialog and hey, presto, it jumps into the right folder. So, you know, as I say, the more of a power user you are, the more you're going to love Yoink. And pretty much if you can drag and drop it, you can pause it in the Yoink bar and get it from anywhere. And now on the iPad, now that iOS has drag and drop, iOS also has Yoink and it is it is delightful. So, again, it's two purchases. You're going to buy it for each OS. But really, the nerd in your life will love you if you buy them a copy of Yoink. So what's the, what's the drag target on an iOS device? What, what are you dragging stuff to? It's basically, it's an app. So you run it as an app that goes into the, the little sort of the narrow app mode. So you can either have it as a pop-over or as a, a side-by-side. It'll work either way. So okay. Like okay. pop-over probably makes the most sense. So basically okay. you're down onto the dock to get the little pop over and then you drop the thing onto it. And then it's sitting there as a drag target to drop onto any other app or any other window. Yeah, I, I use Yoink on, on Macs. Um, it would be really nice if it could be like persistent on an iOS device in the yeah. same way. But... Well, I guess if you have it as a side-by-side app rather than a float over app, it is pretty persistent. So Yeah. But you're giving up some screen space. Bart, do you have to, do you have to drag it? Or is there a way to do a copy and paste into the Yoink tray? There is not. And it's something I have been in contact with the developer about. Because what I would love to happen is when I take a screenshot for it to automatically go into the Yoink bar. So I have made that as a recommendation to the developers. And they've said, interesting idea. But they haven't made any promises. So I guess if other people email them and say they want that, maybe it'll happen. Because that is the most common thing I want to drag and drop. And often if I take a screenshot, what I really want is to be able to quickly send the preview, mark it up and then drag and drop it into an email, right? That's, that seems like the most needed feature. So yeah, if they were to add that, it'd be even more useful. Uh, there are automator scripts out there which you can use, so you can set up your own key combinations to take a screenshot and then drop it onto Yoink because Yoink is Apple scriptable. So mm. you could use automator or anything you like to send stuff to the Yoink bar. I, I, I had tried Yoink for a particular use that I, I, I need yeah and and i had not been successful in it but but your description now um gives me reason to go back and look at it again so thank you yes. yeah i'd give it a go so yeah. it's from eternal storms uh, eternal storms at at forward slash yoink it's a good name right? it's a cool icon as well so it's yeah. it's a cool it's a real nerd app but I, i'm very fond of it <laughs> all right good good i like it rep round four uh, Brett, you're Another muted. Mutee. Hello? There you are. Am I here? You're here. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Um, <laughs> first of all, I totally agree with the Yoink pick that it's it's a great app. Also, when Bart, when you mentioned Allison Sheridan, it suddenly clicked, that's where I know your name from. Uh, ah. She was just on my podcast, and we talked about Chit Chat Across the Pond, and she had you know wonderful things to say about you. Now it's all coming together. Okay. So um, the choices here are between uh, the bedroom and the armchair. So by raise of hands, among you three, bedroom, armchair. Okay. The masses have spoken. So uh, let's see. Can I hold on? All right. Can I get a close up? Sure. Do you have someone in your life that likes the Mac? <laughs> Are they new to Mac? 
Are they looking to become a power user? I have just the thing for you. There's this new book out called uh, 60 Tips for Mac Volume 2. Um, and I do, full disclosure, directly benefit from sales of this book um, <laughs> as, as co-author. But honestly, great Christmas present for any Mac user in your life. It, it, it has like um, tips ranging from uh, <clears throat> not for brand new, I just launched my first Mac, but for like the average user all the way up through the guy who wants to bust into terminal guy or gal who wants to bust into terminal to make things work faster. So that's my pick. And I only brought it up because of popular demand. Uh, that was not entirely <laughs> self-serving. Honestly, I thought you would pick bedroom. Sensible yeah. people would, but yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what the, what the question of bedroom versus so armchair, armchair has to do you're with gonna, it's a book versus my other pick was a pillow oh now I understand okay I didn't want to make it too obvious no you, you were successful it wasn't obvious at all <laughs> <laughs> opaque that's what they call me mm -hmm. sometimes obtuse even yeah okay okay good. okay thank you thank you yes yeah good good pick <laughs> Joe, how are you gonna you gonna go out for the bang? But, well, you know, uh, I, I, I had I had two ideas left, and I was thinking, is is Brett going to potentially say something that will inspire me to choose one of those ideas over the other? So he did. Uh, now, what I have is uh, is something that you can enjoy either in the bedroom or in an armchair, and it's also a book. Not written by me, which I know is weird, right? Because <laughs> because I've written a few. Um, actually, this is this is two books. So um, I, I have to preface this by saying, you know, I know that you're going to have that you not maybe you three in particular, but you the uh, the viewing audience are going to have judgments about this, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but I'm a Twin Peaks fan. I'm a Twin Peaks fan from way back when. And I also did watch the, the latest, you know, Twin Peaks, The Return. And uh, there were those episodes when I went that I just watch and uh, where I was sort of cursing a little bit. And there were episodes where I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, so I, I've had a, a range of feelings about it. And I, and I wasn't really entirely satisfied with how it ended. Uh, but I will say that before uh, before I watched the series, I, I bought and read uh, this book, uh, "The Secret History of Twin Peaks" by Mark Frost. This is this is one of those books that is actually not only you know on paper. It's this is an actual hardcover book. I guess they have them in ebook and audio versions too. I don't know, but uh, this is uh, by by Mark Frost, one of the co-creators of of Twin Peaks. So I, this sort of prepared me for it. And then after I watched it, uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, actually, this one came out. This is Twin Peaks, The Final Dossier. Uh, now, this is, this is a much uh, slender book. But this is the one that, that made me feel okay about all the stuff that I saw in the new series that upset me at the time. So I'm, I'm watching this stuff, and you know, it's weird. It's David Lynch. It's supposed to be weird and incomprehensible. And you don't know if you understand. You know you don't understand it, but you don't even know if you like it. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, but what? So, But the whole thing is like this, this, this new series happened 25 years-ish after the old one. So you're spending this whole, this whole season going, yeah, but what happened to this person? And what happened with that? And what, what about all these loose ends? And you're expecting it to wrap up all these loose ends, and it doesn't. Well, this book does. This book wraps up like 90% of the loose ends that were not addressed in the show for whatever artistic reason. So if you watch the show and you're like, okay, but what happened to, you know, Leo Johnson? What happened to, like, why did this character go, go from here to there? What, you know, what happened to Donna? What, why, why is James the way he is? All these, all these like questions that might come up during during the um, during the viewing. Uh, most of those answers are in here. So this obviously has nothing at all to do with technology. Um, it's books, you know. But uh, but if you if you 
like Twin Peaks or almost sort of thought you might like Twin Peaks, but you were just kind of irritated with it, uh, these books will, will make you marginally less irritated. Uh, they will give you a bit of joy. And um, mm-hmm. and they they might actually fill in some of those things that you always wished you knew about that you, you didn't know about. So so that's my, my final pick. Well, w- Is there one for a racer head? I... No, sadly. <laughs> Without tech, you couldn't watch Twin Peaks, so there's your connection. Oh, sure. Sure, let's go with that. Good. And I like that the spines match up to make one picture on the back. Yes, yes, the spines do match up. Um, I mean, these still have the, uh, the, you know, the little little slip covers on them, but they they do exactly match up if I can hold them straight. Um, And uh, they're nice books. Like they are. They are. They are really solid books and lots of lots of cool stuff in there. So, and this is this is canonical because it's written by one of the two writers of, of the series. So, um, for those of you who like that sort of thing, and if you have judgments, then you know, keep them to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a judgment, Joe. I don't know why. I just never never pictured you as a Twin Peaks fan. I don't know why. Dude, listen, I, I have gone to um, the Twin Peaks Fan Festival that they have in Washington every year. I've gone a couple of times. Not only did I meet the log lady, I got to hold the log. I have pictures, Morgan does too, <laughs> of, of us sitting with the log lady, uh, who, who the, the, the actress, uh, Catherine Coulson, uh, uh, just died um, like last year. So it was very sad for us, but, but we, we have actually, we've met her. We've held the law. We met a whole bunch of the, uh, of the actors from the series. We, we visited a lot of the sites where they filmed it. Um, we've, we've been kind of into it for a long time. So I first met Joe, uh, back in an hour ago and I absolutely, (laughs) absolutely knew he was a Twin Peaks fan. Uh, well, I've known him a little bit it longer. Shows. I mean, yeah, I, maybe my maybe my judgment has been covered with other things I know about Joe. But <laughs> and, and and Chuck's final pick is his shocking expose yeah. things you never would have guessed about Joe, Joe Kissel. Kissel. <laughs> yeah, I, that's I'm going to put that on my things to do list. Yeah, that's I like that. I like that. Okay, so I've been kind of debating over my last pick, and I think I'm going to change from what it was going to be. Um, because I, I helped a friend order a new iMac and there was an extensive discussion about magic mouse or magic trackpad. And I'm trying, I think I'm going to try to convert the world to the trackpads. Okay. I get lots of thumbs up. From everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this, this, I, I, w- I want to be careful with that. I don't issue a command. I don't intend to, but this little device is kind of amazing. Now this is one of the older models. You get the new ones and you can just plug them in your, uh, via lightning cable when they charge. Okay. Every, everybody's <laughs> holding up their track pads. Um, I can't imagine. I look, I know there's a little bit of a learning curve and I'm also quick to tell you that I have never since the very first Mac I used, I've never used a mouse. For, for anything significant. I've always, I was always a trackball person. That was the first peripheral I bought. But when the touchpad came, man, I just, you know, I was in love because no more mechanical issues, no more of the little rollers to, to clean the gunk out of, um, you know, nothing. Chuck, and the, I have three letters that are explain why I use nothing but trackpads or S and I. Yep. There you go. That, that trackpad literally saved my career because as an IT professional, you, you can't go into the, you, you can't use something that is destroying you every day. Yeah. And you I know. had to give up mice. I, yeah. I can't use mice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and look, I, I understand if you are a graphic artist or something, you know, there's a time and a place for a mouse because you can probably do things maybe a little more precisely. I don't know because I'm not a mouse user. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I, I'm Joe a photographer, right? There, I have yet to come across a slider in Photoshop that I can't control perfectly with these gigantic and very accurate trackpads. I mean, this is not like a a poopy little Windows laptop with the world's smallest postage stamp of a of a trackpad. These are completely different devices, and Windows users do not understand why us Mac users adore our trackpads because they're using junk from Dell. 
Well, they didn't understand a lot of things because when the those first ThinkPads came out with the little red, red nipple thing that you manipulated, it was like oh, yeah, that what was, was horrible. Yeah, J key or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Ugh, but the, the, the point and the, and the other point here too is that once you get used to using this, then you can use it with uh, your MacBook Pro seamlessly. I mean, you can even pair this with a MacBook Pro, no problem. If if you mm -hmm. really decide that that's the way you want it, so I, I really think that if you haven't tried a, a Magic Trackpad, please try it. At least give it a shot. If you have to return it, you have to return it. But I I find it so much easier. There's so much less maintenance. Um, if you get one that recharges, then all you have to do is recharge it. If not, throw in some some rechargeable batteries and a charger from Amazon, and you're you're done. You know, two two sets yeah, one they, one in the device, a... one to charge. There's a, a docking charger you can get for the model that you showed that actually just it plugs in and it creates like a there's a little one inch nub that comes out of the upper left then and you can just slide it into this dock and mm -hmm. it'll charge overnight and then it's rechargeable batteries oh, so and then get better touch tool and find yeah. out what a trackpad can really do. Yes. Yeah. And so, even I, without extra tools, the gestures in OS 10 are amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, you know, once you get used to two finger scrolling, three finger swipe to go between your spaces, like the reason I'm a heavy spaces user is because I'm a trackpad user, mm -hmm. because you just flick over and back seamlessly between them. And if you want to see your desktop, you have gestures. You I mean, you have gestures for all of these things. And once you get used to them, they are absolutely amazing. And you, it, it is the closest you're going to get to having a touchscreen iMac, only without the RSI that comes from reaching up to try and touch a bloody iMac. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, if you've used an iPad Pro for a while, you've done anyway. Well, I like mine flat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so sick of touching my, my MacBook Pro screen every time. I can't Scroll say it. I've ever done it because I have such a phobia of fingerprints on screens. <laughs> yeah, I, you're right. I've never, I've never been tempted. I, I've never even thought about it. My, it's not like I'm I not get old. Oh, no. It's force of habit. <laughs> I'm not happy about it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that the panel endorses my pick because you know that that just it's it's not the sec again it's not the sexiest thing, but you you find out that there are whole new aspects of the interface that open up to you that you aren't familiar with, and especially if you're if you're not using if you're just using a mouse, I mean the things you never even know are there until you get one of these. So yeah, make no mistake, Apple expects you to have a trackpad. Yeah. There are so many parts yeah. of the interface that are. <clears throat> geared to the trackpad um, they are expecting that nobody's using mouse or trackball or i mean it'll work for you but yeah no get a trackpad it's delightful yeah so that's my that's my fourth round pick hopefully it's a productive pick i think it will be guys that's a lot of interesting things um you didn't disappoint me some of those came right out of left field good job good job you're welcome um I want to make sure we, we let everyone know where they can find each of you. So if they want to question you uh, on your picks or challenge you on your picks or whatever they can. Um, so, Bart, where can folks uh, get in touch with you? Uh, probably the easiest thing is to go to bartb.ie. That's my personal website where you'll find links to everything I do. And if you want my podcast in particular, it's lets-talk.ie, which is Let's Talk Apple at the start of every month where we look back at the last month of Apple News from a sort of a forest instead of the trees point of view. And then the middle of every month, let's talk photography, where we talk about the art and craft of photography with a strict rule. It's not about whether you get this lens or that lens. It's about why you would want a telephoto, you know, what would you use a telephoto for artistically. So it's, it's the art and craft of photography, not the tech minutia. And I always learn something every episode I listen to, Bart. So thank you. Oh, thanks, Chuck. Thank, thanks for being here and happy holidays. Same to you. Mr. Terpstra, I don't never know what shirts you're going to show up with next. So, um, where where can folks go to find you? <laughs> um, I am TT Scoff, T T S C O F F, on every imaginable social service. So, if you want to yell at me for something in brief format, that would be the place to do it. You can also find me at brettterpstra.com, where there's a contact form for longer form communication. But you'll have to figure out how to spell brettterpshire.com first. Um, and then over at esn.fm, I have uh, two podcasts, one called Systematic, which is an interview show that Chuck has been on. And 
I imagine I will eventually get both of the other guests on. Um, and then Overtired with Christina Warren, which was originally about not sleeping. And now it's about how funny it was that we didn't use to sleep. So check those out. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Happy holidays. And thanks for being here. You too. And Joe, you're never on Mac Voices, so you better give people a lot of detail about uh, you know where they can find you. Well, you know, the funny thing is that, you know, like, like Brett, I'm, I'm kind of everywhere in the sense that if you, if you, if you type in Joe Kissel and if you spell it correctly with two S's and two L's, uh, then, you know, you will find me on Twitter and you will find me on Facebook and you will find me on whatever it is. They'll LO, I don't know, whatever the cool kids are using or the, the not LO. <laughs> I don't know. Like I'm, you know, I'm on all the places, right? Google plus, like, I don't, I don't, but the thing is, and, and joekissel.com too, but like, it's, it's going to be probably another six months until my annual blog post. Uh, cause like, I just, I'm busy, you know, like I don't have time for blogging and I don't have time for, uh, very much tweeting. Uh, but there is a contact form on my site on joekissel.com where you can send me email and I do answer my emails very promptly. Um, and you can tweet at me. Um, but, uh, what I'd really like you to do is go to takecontrolbooks.com, uh, which is the publishing company that I run. And, uh, some of the books are written by me. A lot of them are written by other people. And, uh, if you want to learn about how to do cool stuff with technology and how to stay safe and keep your information private and use your Macs and iOS devices and other things better, uh, we've got a book for you. We've got lots of books for you. So, uh, so I'll see you there. Thank you, Joe. I'm sure we'll be talking before the holidays, but happy holidays anyway. Thank you. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is gift guide number two. We've got more coming for you, more great products, more great guests, and hopefully a lot of laughs uh, as well, uh, because that's what these, these shows always degenerate into. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at Patreon.com slash MacVoices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at BackbeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at Cashfly.com. <laughs>